Today we're going to take a look at the 2022 Honda ADV 150. We'll talk about where this scooter fits into Honda's current model lineup and we'll go over some of its specs and features and what Honda changed for 2022. Plus, we'll start it up and show you what it sounds like and a lot more. But first, if you guys find any info in this video helpful, please take a second and hit the like button. Liking the video and commenting below really helps with growing this channel through YouTube's algorithm and I really appreciate the help guys. So first up, where does the ADV fit into Honda's current scooter model lineup? Now keep in mind Honda's entire 2022 model lineup hasn't been announced just yet so this info will change when Honda announces some new models within the next couple months. You have the Metropolitan at $24.99 and Ruckus at $27.99 both with a 49cc engine, so your speeds are going to be limited to around 35 miles an hour. Then you have the PCX, which used to be called the PCX 125, then the PCX 150, and now we call it the PCX after its latest bump in engine size, whereas some countries now call it the PCX 160, and it comes in at $37.99 followed up by the ADV 150 at $42.99. Now all of these are 2022 model years, except for the PCX, it was a late 2021 model year announcement, so it's the only existing 2021 out of the entire scooter lineup we just covered. I wanna take a quick second and say thank you to Southern Honda Power Sports for opening their doors to me and allowing me to come pick through their inventory for these videos. They are a massive Honda Power Sports dealer here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, with tons of inventory from new Hondas to used Harleys and everything in between that they sell to people from all over the USA. So check out the link in the description below and head over to their website to see if they can save you some money on your next toy. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into a little more info on the ADV 150. So what did Honda change for 2022? Not a lot as this was a new model introduced in 2021 and they rarely jump right into big updates the following year. The only change comes in the way of colors. Last year you had only one color to choose from, matte black metallic, and that color option for this year has been replaced with a beautiful candy rose red that you see here. They also blacked out some of the body panels on the side as well that were silver last year and that's it for changes. Now let's jump into some of the electronics and tech behind the ADV. The first part is pretty controversial. This is another model ditching your standard key in favor of a key fob. It's automatically activated as you approach. You just hop on and turn the knob to on, hit the start button, and you're ready to ride. Don't worry though, you can lock it with the fob so if you're in the vicinity and someone jumps on it, they can't just turn the switch on and take off. Plus, you can still lock the handlebars like you've been able to in the past. It also has an answer back switch on the fob to flash the turn signals to help you locate it. You know, in that massive sea of ADV scooters you'll stumble across and lose yours in. I don't see her. I don't see her anywhere. You also have LED lighting all the way around to bring down its weight, energy consumption, and overall illumination. It also has a large LCD display with the usual info and to make sure it has plenty of real estate. They put your dummy lights for turn signals, high beams, and more in a smaller display right below it. And the last thing here will be that you do have a 12 volt charging port in the little two liter glove box on the left. It has an awkward shape to it, but to give you an idea on size, my Note 9 fits right in there. And now we'll jump into the engine and drivetrain. It has a 149.3 cc water-cooled and fuel-injected 80-degree single-cylinder four-stroke engine. It makes right at 14 and a half horsepower and that can propel you to around 70 miles an hour depending on your weight, elevation changes, blood type, and all that good stuff. When comparing against the PCX150, the ADV's intake system has a 21 millimeter longer air cleaner duct and a 2 millimeter longer connecting tube for better low and mid-range torque. Since Honda wanted this to be more adventure if that's a word, than the PCX. And it has Honda's continuously variable V-Matic automatic transmission, in short, a CVT, which helps provide a smooth power delivery and of course requires no shifting, just start it up and twist the throttle. And then to stop it, you have your front brake lever on the right and rear brake is operated by the left lever where a clutch would normally be. Thankfully, as is the case with most Hondas, 
It won't break the bank to maintain this engine either, as you can see here from the maintenance schedule. Now let's get into the chassis and suspension. You have a lightweight and compact frame that Honda mounted the engine and fuel tank as low as possible in to help keep the overall center of gravity down and to give you more confidence when throwing it around. Up front for suspension, you have a class leading 31 millimeter Showa fork with 5.12 inches of travel. While out back, you have twin piggyback Showa shocks offering up 4.72 inches of travel. For braking, this model comes standard with ABS up front and you have a 240 millimeter brake rotor up there with a single caliper and in the rear you have a single mechanical 130 millimeter drum brake. Those brakes are stopping a set of wide tubeless tires that are wrapped around a 13 inch wheel in the back and a 14 inch up front. Now let's bounce around the bike and hit on a few different things. How about storage? Aside from the 2 liter spot up front we mentioned earlier, you also have a 27 liter storage area under the seat. It's super easy to get to, all you have to do is push the little button and you're good to go. That little button brings us to the next part too. How do you put fuel in its 2.1 gallon tank? Hit the opposite side of that button and your fuel lid will rise. The ADV also has a side stand. Now to some people that may not seem like a big deal, but it is when you're getting on and off these and always having to fool with putting it back up on the center stand like on the Ruckus and Metropolitan. Now once you get center stands down, they're super easy, but still, nowhere near as easy as flipping your kickstand out and hopping off. Speaking of hopping off, it'll be a little more difficult on this ADV over the PCX as it has a taller seat height at 31.3 inches compared to 30.1 and since we're getting into numbers, let's go over a few more. Its curb weight comes in at 294 pounds compared to a 288 on the PCX with ABS. And ground clearance on the ADV comes in at 6.5 inches compared to 5.3 on the PCX. Plus, another cool feature that Honda is finally starting to throw on more models is adjustable windshields. Now granted, its range is minimal at best with only 2.8 inches but we're moving in the right direction and you don't need any tools to adjust it. Now let's start it up and show you guys what it sounds like and then we'll come back for a few more things. And that's the 2022 Honda ADV 150. In my opinion, it's one of the coolest scooters Honda makes right now. For the US, that is, as we get gypped on a lot of models that are offered around the globe, but it's something that you can have fun with on the street, and if you see a dirt road, it's capable enough that you can swerve down it and have some fun too. What do you guys think about it? Would you rather have this over your regular run-of-the-mill scooter? And what do you guys think Honda should change on it in the future? Also. Who thinks Honda should hurry up and bring its big brother, the X-ADV, to the States? Let's talk about it down in the comments section as this is more than just me rambling on in a video, it's a conversation. But on that note, that's it for this video guys. Thanks again for all the support and we'll see you in the next one.